This is going to be Psalm 28, starting in verse 1. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. He calls the Lord his rock. Make sure that the real rock is the one you cry to and not something made out of a rock or something that has rocks for brains because it can't see, hear, or walk. You see, man has a history of crying to something that doesn't talk back. In Judges ten thirteen through 14, it says, Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Now look what the Lord says. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. If those false gods are so good, then why do you cry to the God of heaven when tribulation comes? Why don't you cry to those other gods you worshipped? The Lord being sarcastic and says, Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And then in Jeremiah 11 through 12, it says, Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense. But they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. They can't get any help from those false gods. They've got the wrong rock. If you're going to cry, cry to the real rock. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. God is the real rock. Many people think we came from a rock, but they think it was an actual rock. Mm -hmm. It takes more faith to believe that than it does to believe that we came from God. Jesus is the rock, and I can prove it to you. In 1 Peter 2, 8, it says, And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So it calls him a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. In Daniel 2, 45, it says, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So, he is the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. And then in Matthew sixteen eighteen, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is the rock on which the church was built. Deuteronomy thirty two thirty one: For their rock is not as our rock, capital R, in the rock, even our enemies themselves being judges, it says. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Most people have the wrong rock. In Psalm 28, 1, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Now who goes down to the pit? Who's going to go down to the pit? Lost people. Many times people will say, I just don't feel like the Lord is talking to me anymore. Many times this is because they aren't even reading the Bible. See, the Bible is how God talks back to you. The more Bible you read and the more Bible you become familiar with, the more he's going to be able to talk to you. That way, when you need an answer, he can bring all things to your remembrance. Like it says in John fourteen twenty six. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things, bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You see, you read a lot of Bible, something will come up in your life, and then the Lord will bring something to your, your remembrance that you have read. That's how he talks to you. You see, if you got the Bible closed all the time, it's like you just turned a deaf ear to God's mouth. So you can expect God to be silent to you if you don't even read the Bible. Psalm 28, 1, And to thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. If you're not reading the Bible, and the Lord is silent to you, 
then in a way you have become like them that go down into the pit. You know why? Because those that go down to the pit, they don't talk to God or hear from God all day long. He is silent to them because they never open the Bible. In a sense, you're acting like a lost person. If you never open the Bible and you never pray, you, in action, you're like a lost person, even though you're saved. In Psalm 28, 2, it says, Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. So this lifting up of hands and supplications, this has to do with praying. David's praying. It's like that verse in 1 Timothy 2, 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In 1 Kings 8, 22 through 23, look what Solomon does. And St Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. So when David and Solomon talked to the Lord in prayer, they would sometimes lift up their hands. They're lifting up their hands in prayer. And David says in verse 2, Psalm 28, 2, Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. He says, hear the voice of my supplications. Supplications is like a you're requesting for some supplies. You're asking God to supply you. And David is doing this with hands lifted up toward thy holy oracle. Oracle like oral. He has his hands lifted up waiting on an answer from the Lord, from the mouth of the Lord. He says, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. The wicked and workers of iniquity act like they are your friend, but they are really just your enemy. And a good illustration is a picture I seen one time. And in this picture, a person is drowning in the water with their, all you can see is the person's hand sticking up out of the water. It's a stormy sea, and they got this, you just see this hand sticking up out of the water, basically saying, help me. And then you got a wicked man in a boat who doesn't grab the hand. He just gives the hand a high five. And that is what the modern preachers today are doing. They pretend they're your friend. They pretend that they're they're giving you the Bible. They're giving you the right way. But really, they won't talk about sin. They won't talk about hell. They won't talk about judgment. They won't give you the right gospel. And while they pretend to be at peace with you, they're, they got a smiley face while they give you a high five on your way to hell. A wicked man smiles, gives you a pat on the back, a fist bump, a salute, a stimulus check, a peace sign, all on your way to hell. They speak, they speak peace to their neighbors, but their heart is full of mischief. You got to watch people like that because they're always scheming. When I did that expose of the Fortnite game a while back, it had a character named Loki, God of Mischief. That's a red flag right there. You got to watch people that are always scheming and mischievous and always got this weird smile on their face in proverbs 6 16 through 18 it talks about six things that the lord hates and one of the things that the lord hates is feet that be swift and running to mischief you see there's a lot of busy devil people out there evil workers they're doing a lot more work than your average christian except it's for the devil they speak peace to their neighbor though I mean, they have they they appear as an angel of light. They appear as a minister of righteousness. And you have to be close to the Lord to recognize the bull shooter many times. In other cases, it's just obvious. I mean, if you've got your Bible goggles on and you look at Kenneth Copeland's smile, then you would see fangs on a frowny face emoji. That's what you'd see. If you do the same thing for Joe Biden, you would see the poop emoji taking a nap. I mean, you wouldn't see these smiling, dignified people anymore. 
you would see them for what they really are. In Psalm 28, 3, Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. David, he says, Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity. I don't want to be drawn away with the wicked. I don't want to stand in the same line as them on Judgment Day. I don't want to be bound up in bundles with them. I don't want to be a part of that second resurrection that gets cast into the lake of fire. David says in Psalm 1-1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He doesn't want to be drawn away with the wicked. Like Jesus talks about in Matthew 13, 30. He says, let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So the tares is bound up in bundles and burned. And then look at uh, Matthew thirteen forty through 42. It says, as therefore the Tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire that shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So that, I think I said Mark thirteen thirty. that's Matthew thirteen thirty. You see, the tares are gathered. He binds them in bundles to burn them. And then you find out that's the, wicked people that's bound up to be cast into a furnace of fire it says as therefore the tares are gathered and burn in the fire so shall it be in the end of the world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend in them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth you don't want to be drawn away with the wicked I don't want to be no part of that. I'm a chicken when it comes to that. I need Jesus. I needed Jesus to save me. And I have Jesus. And something about a furnace of fire that those bundles of wicked people are going into doesn't sound good to me. So like David said in Psalm 28, 3, Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Then David says... Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. If the Lord gives them these, if the Lord gives these devils in the flesh according to their deeds, then hell is the only thing that can match it. If the Lord gives them according to their endeavors, then they must go to a place where nobody cares anything about them. Because that is their attitude towards others. They don't give a rip about anyone but themselves. And if the Lord is going to give them after the work of their hands, then he is going to have to put them in a place of torment. They torment people because this is how they gain what they want in this life. Their gain comes from hurting other people, from killing, stealing, and from fraud. David says, give them according to their deeds. We don't like to think about it, but one of these days, every sinner will be picked up out of hell to stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. And the Lord will say, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. In Psalm 28, 5, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. When they look around and see the works of the Lord, it says, you know, it says because they regard not the works of the Lord. They regard it as the work of billions of years of evolution and aliens and the Big Bang and anything other than God. They don't regard the works of the Lord. In Psalm 19, 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He made man. He made a deep sleep to fall on Adam. He took his rib and made a woman. That was the operation of his hands, literally. He's the only person who could play operation in a car with your grandma driving in an earthquake, and he'd never hit the sides or get that buzzing sound. He would always win the game of operation. He performed the very first operation ever. 
He made a deep sleep to fall on Adam. He took out his rib. You know, he did an operation on us at salvation. He gave us the spiritual circumcision. He cut our soul loose from the flesh. He was the most trustworthy surgeon there is. But they don't regard the works of the Lord or the operation of his hands. The reprobate doesn't want to regard anything to do with God. He doesn't want to retain God in his knowledge. In Psalm 28, 5, it says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. The wicked man is more concerned with what he has done with his own hands. That is why you see men in the Bible who worship the work of their own hands, and he will actually destroy them and not build them up. Verse 5 says, But me and you are different. He's not going to build them up. But me and you are God's building. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, it says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. In Colossians 2, 6, and 7, it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. 1 Peter 2, 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So he builds us up. We're built up. We're his building. But he's not going to build them up. They're going to be destroyed. In Psalm 28, 6, it says, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. Isn't it something that the God who made everything wants to hear what you have to say and hear the voice of your supplications? The most admired man on this planet wouldn't want to hear what you have to say, and he wouldn't have the time even if he did. But God can. And did you know that from the time you were saved, he has given you all the time in the world? And I like things that are open 24-7, and God's ear is open 24-7. He never takes a break. Uh, when you get down in prayer and go to the throne room, there is never an out-to-lunch sign. There is never a off-for-vacation sign. He's always there. Prayer is your greatest privilege. It says in 1 Timothy 2, 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. In Psalm 28, 7, David says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and my song, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord's shield is bulletproof, it's waterproof, it's fireproof, it's hellproof, it's mother in law proof, it's demon crap proof, needle proof, and needs you, it, it, keep, it keeps you safer than Bill Clinton wearing a trillion masks while he's social distancing on Epstein Island for a two weeks quarantine. I mean, it's the most safest place to be, getting behind the shield. It says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Deuteronomy 33, 29, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. In Genesis 15, 1, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. In Psalm 5, 12, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. The Lord's shield is much better than Captain America's shield. The Lord is the captain of our salvation, according to Hebrews 2.10. And there is another guy called Captain Planet, but he isn't much compared to the Lord either, because the Lord made the planets. The Lord made all of the earth and the wind and the fire, and he cares more about the souls of men than he cares about keeping the environment clean. In Psalm 28.8, the Lord is their strength. And he is the saving strength of his anointed. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because the Lord is your strength. He is the saving strength. In 2 Corinthians 12.10 it says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches 
and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. Listen to this. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Lifting weights can actually make you weaker. You start relying on your own muscles rather than on God. After I do a job for a while, I get so good at it that it, I, I start getting cocky with it. You start being kind of reckless and thinking, you know, you got this and nothing bad's going to happen. Especially if it's like a physical job. You enjoy, I enjoy showing my superiority over everyone who comes up there to try to do it. Especially when they are these, you know, they get these big rough looking convicts that think they're so tough. Something in me as a little guy just likes to put them in the dust. So when I start getting too cocky, I quit eating anything. And if you quit eating at about 5 p.m. at night and then don't eat anything until you get off work the next day at about 4 p.m., you'll no longer see yourself as strong anymore. You'll realize how much of a weakling you really are. This made me realize that fasting isn't about just going without food. It's about showing yourself that without food you can't hardly make it and when you can't hardly make it you quit thinking you're anything special you start realizing the lord is your strength and he is the saving strength you start being strong in the lord and in the power of his might you start being weak and then you're strong because you're relying on the one that's really strong which is the lord do you know how little strength you actually have? It's pathetic. There are things in this life that would throw you around like a cabbage patch kid. I, th I seen this story of this one 300-pound guy. He was getting out of his car, and all of a sudden a big bull just charges at him and hits him and sends this 300-man flying in the air like a feather. I mean, go fight a gorilla or a lion or even just a little featherweight UFC fighter. A little featherweight... UFC fighter would knock the average big tough looking 300 pound guy that walks around and just knock him out like it like it's nothing there's always somebody that would knock you out there's always something that would knock you out you're not tough and the Lord is your strength quit relying on your own strengths rely on the Lord did you know the average guy who walks around like he's just all that would actually get knocked out by a good portion of tough women that are out there, that would be a humbling experience to get your head knocked in by a woman. Kind of like Jael did Sisera. Kind of like that woman did Abimelech. Kind of like the bride of Christ is going to do at the second coming to the devil. In Psalm 28, 9, Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. I believe this is doctrinally talking about the nation of Israel at the second coming and the kingdom. Notice it says, Save thy people. He will feed them, and they will dwell safely without fear of evil on any side, kind of like it was during the reign of Solomon. During the reign of Solomon, the land was at complete rest. He didn't give an adversary to Solomon on any side at first. And that pictures the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the Lord is... You know, he's going to save his people when he comes back. He's going to bless them. He's going to feed them and lift them up forever. But this has been Psalm 28.